Hey there, in this video I will show you how you can make and add circles to your space engineer's designs. Firstly, I will give you some examples of what you can do with this technique. Then I'll show you a few ways you can make circles. And finally, I have some meme-worthy bonus content. Firstly, you can make circles. And who doesn't love circles in a block game? You can make custom wheels of all shapes and sizes. And with weird wheels come weird vehicles. This one's a little hard to control. You can also make inline mono wheels with these custom wheels. You can add circular cosmetic structures to your builds. A custom engine cover, for example. Or you could make a nice circular space station. If you did it like this, with two hulls and an inner core that's airtight, you could even build a pressurized circular space station. You can align objects in a circle build stuff like this, for example. And now for the tutorials. First, plop down a landing gear and a battery, so you can use the hinges. If you want the circle with just the rim, you only need hinges and some structural blocks. To make your life easier, make sure these notches on the hinge always face the same direction. If they face to the outside of the circle, your hinges will rotate to positive angles, and if they are aligned to the inside of the circle, your hinges will rotate to the negative angles. Then you place down as many hinges as you want. If you're doing this in creative, you can make your life easier by copying the segment you've already made and attach it to reduce floppage you can turn on pair inertia tensor in the settings of the hinges remove the hinge part from the last hinge and add one to your starting block set the lower limit to zero If your notches are facing outwards, here I have 20 hinges. You can calculate the angle you need to set for the hinges quite easily. Take 360 degrees and divide it by the amount of hinges you have. So in my case it's 18 degrees. Select all the hinges, set the upper limit to 18 degrees or whatever you got from the calculation. Now you can give all the hinges some small velocity. If you make really large circles, the end might droop down a bit. You can fix this by making the circle on the ground like this, or by adding a piston to your circle and using it to lift it upwards. Then you can once again select all the hinges and click attach. If it turns dark, that means your, all your hinges are locked in place. There you go. 
once it's locked in place, it's quite robust. Even if I turn the per inertia tensor off. Sometimes things like this happen though. Next up, if you want a circle with a central hub, I'll make this red so you can clearly see the center. From the center, go out as many blocks as you want your radius to be. Take away three blocks, add a piston, and another block on the end of the piston. Do the same thing for the other direction. Now you can start making the circle. Go out roughly one and a half times the distance from here to here. So one and a half times your radius using hinges and structural box. So in this case it's about 15. Again make sure those notches on the hinge are pointing the same direction. Once you are one and a half times your radius away from this point, add one more hinge and remove the hinge part and add another hinge part here. Then go to control your grid, select all the hinges, do the same thing here. So set the lower limit to zero. Now you can calculate the upper limit as easily as before, but this time use 90 degrees since you are only making a fourth of the ring. Divide it by the number of hinges you have. In this case I have 9, so it's exactly 10 degrees. Set your upper limit to that angle and give the hinges some small velocity. Now, I recommend placing a control panel here, so you can clearly see what's happening. Select both of the pistons and set their maximum distance to zero and give them some small positive velocity. Now, you can start sliding the maximum distance and at some point the hinges should exactly line up. It can take some massaging. It can help if you click the share inertia tensor on the hinges. Looks like I went a bit too far, so I kind of decrease the maximum distance and reverse the pistons. The closer you get with this, the less clang you will have on the final circle. That's pretty close, I think I'll. Extend them just a bit. Maybe a bit more. Good 69 centimeters. Alright. Now you have the correct piston length here. And the correct angle for the hinges. If you are playing in survival, you can just connect this hinge. And continue for the rest of the circle. And you can use the length of these pistons for the two other radii. If you're playing in creative, you can delete this arm, add a hinge part here, then reverse the hinges so they are not in the way. Make a copy of the radius and hinges you have created and you can place it on the center. Select all the hinges and hit reverse. They should all line up perfectly and select them and click attach. Once again, if this turns dark, all your hinges have attached correctly. There you go. A nice circle with a central hub. Once again, these are quite robust. I 
I'll show you again with the share inertia tensors turned off. The circles with the central hub are far less likely to spaz out of control. If your circles are gonna be static, I rec recommend leaving the share inertia tensor on. But if you use them for wheels, you should turn it off. Otherwise, you can't really turn the wheel. Just to demonstrate how little distortion this has, I'll delete this central block. You barely saw them move. If you're building this in creative and you want to add some repeating pattern or structure to your circle segments you should do it before finishing the circle then you can just copy the segment you created in survival you'll have to build each of the segments by hand having so many subgrids might have a impact on your fps but it's really not that bad actually you really have to push it for it to get noticeable and now are you ready for the meme worthy bonus content i built a penny farthing and to my own surprise it's actually drivable first you have to get the front wheel going and then just hit detach you can use the onboard gyroscopes to keep it balanced might get a little bumpy Thanks for watching and please like the video if you enjoyed it and check out my channel for other weird content. Bye bye.